A bit of hidden gem. No, we're not in Wisconsin. We're in Milwaukee, Oregon. It's one of the top up and coming suburbs in the Portland metropolitan area. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what it costs to live here. All that starts now. Seth Marchant with the Home Team Brokers here. Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new to this channel, living in Oregon, and you'd like to know more about what it's like to live in Oregon, make sure and hit the subscribe button and tap the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we drop a new video, which is every week. And if you're somebody that's thinking about moving here as licensed brokers in the state of Oregon, as much as we love making these videos, we'd love to help you move here as well. You can call, text, email, or you can click the link below in the description of this video if you want to schedule a Zoom with us. All right, let's get into the cost of living in Milwaukee, Oregon. First thing we're going to start with is housing attached three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom, and the medium cost of uh, all the homes sold here recently in Milwaukee. Uh, there wasn't a ton of attached sold here in the last month or two, and specifically about four properties sold over the past quarter or so in Milwaukee. The medium price for an attached property in Milwaukee, um, which is typically going to be a three bedroom, uh, is $447,000. The average was five ninety-seven. dollars Again, kind of, little, kind of skewed a little bit uh, with just four properties sold. Now for three bedroom single family homes in Milwaukee, the median price for the past month was $485,000. Average was just above that at $505,000. A four bedroom home, the median price $605,000. And the average is right there at $598,000 and a five bedroom home actually in Milwaukee. There, there was only six sales uh, in the past, uh, about quarter or so. And those ones averaged actually uh, 697, but the median was down there at, at 511. So with only six properties, that's where you kind of have a little bit of uh, a little bit more variation in uh, in that pricing. There was nine properties sold uh, for four beds uh, in the past a few months in Milwaukee. And again, that median price was 600. So a five bed, you, you'd probably expect probably low 600s uh, on average. Now overall, there's been about 60 properties sold in the past month or so and the median price was 490 and the average was 534. That puts you kind of just under and maybe in some neighborhoods, depending on how desirable, maybe not so desirable, the neighborhoods are in Southeast Portland. That's probably about what you're looking at uh, coming into uh, Q1 of the new year and just ending Q4 of 2022. You're looking somewhere in the $500,000 range for Milwaukee. A lot of places in Southeast Portland and Northeast North Portland, if you keep going further north, probably gonna be getting closer towards those mid fives. And that's one reason why Milwaukee has been so desirable over the past couple of years. In fact, uh, the zip code Milwaukee, there's two, 97267 and 97222, uh, but the zip code 97222 Milwaukee, uh, maybe two or three years ago, was one of the hottest zip codes in the Portland metropolitan area. And a lot of that is uh, just due to its proximity. It has a really good location. So kind of what people found was you can, kind of eat, sleep, play, work, all the pros and cons, you can still be kind of in the Portland proper area, uh, but maybe live in Milwaukee, which is maybe just 10 minutes away, just 10 minutes south on Highway 99. So homes in Milwaukee weren't that close to home prices in Portland uh, beyond two or three years ago, but uh, people sort of found out that's a great location, great little suburb. You're kind of, you're in the burbs, but not quite in the city, but you can be in the city in 10 minutes. So it got really popular uh, semi-recently. A lot of people started moving there and kind of drove the home prices up now. So home prices are kind of similar to Portland prices, but probably still a little bit less right now as it stands. And you're also in Clackamas County. You're right there on the border of Clackamas and Multnomah County. So there's going to be some differences there. Uh, being in Clackamas County, uh, things are, uh, how things are governed are going to be slightly different. You know, a big one um, recently being uh, how the homeless people, you know, how the, the houseless people um, are dealt with. Uh, a little bit different in Clackamas County than Multnomah County. Multnomah County has really struggled uh, with some of those problems. You won't find that as much in Clackamas County. So that's another reason why uh, people from Portland have kind of been driven a little bit south towards Milwaukee. 
You might also find that there's a little bit less crime and uh, your police presence is, is maybe a little bit more prominent. If you, if you, have to, if you do have to, uh, to call the police, the response time is typically going to be a little bit better in Clackamas County than Multnomah County. So not exactly in Portland, you might have to drive a little bit farther to some of those really great Portland restaurants that you want, but you're just right next door and then you, you get all the benefits of kind of being in the suburbs and not having to deal with some of the downsides of being in Multnomah County. So for that reason, uh, Milwaukee has been very popular over the past few years and that has kind of driven up home prices, but still a uh, very competitive relative to Portland. Now, as far as HOAs go in Milwaukee, you're not going to find a ton of HOAs. Most of the HOAs in Milwaukee are going to be for attached housing like a condo. You're not going to find a ton of HOAs um, that are going to be pesky, you know, those stigmas of HOAs, not letting you do things that you want to do. So if you're if you're looking for like a single family home, it's not going to be too common that you'll bump into an HOA in Milwaukee. If you do, a lot of the HOAs are typically going to just be for like common area maintenance. So paying some sort of uh, cost, you know, to maintain like a common area or to maintain landscaping or something like that. And as far as cost goes, uh, if you do bump into an HOA in Milwaukee, cheapest I've seen is 35 bucks a year, probably just for some very minimal uh, common maintenance, all the way up to maybe about a couple hundred dollars a month per quarter in some places. And uh, those are mostly, again, in places that have attached units like condos. All right, how about entertainment? What does entertainment look like? What does costs look like for entertainment in Milwaukee? It's probably gonna vary actually, maybe a little bit more so than other surrounding places. And here's why. You can find a lot of cheap entertainment. You can also spend a lot of money on entertainment, both in Milwaukee as well as in Portland. Having such a close proximity to Portland, you might find yourself doing something such as going to the Motor Center and going to the Bla a Blazer game more often if you live in Milwaukee than say if you lived in like a Happy Valley or a Wilsonville. Whereas Milwaukee is like a 10, 12 minute drive. You're getting out there in like Beaverton or Wilsonville, you're looking at like 30 or 40 minutes and uh, traffic does get bad during those Blazer games. So you might find yourself going downtown Portland for more events if you live in Milwaukee. If you're just gonna stay in Milwaukee, as far as entertainment goes, Milwaukee is known for its great shopping, its parks, wine bars and tap rooms. There's a Breakside Brewery, which is a, an international award-winning brewery. You've got Bob's Red Mill, which is uh, in stores throughout the country. You can take a tour at the Bob's Red Mill headquarters, which is in Milwaukee, and they've got a restaurant in there. It's really popular. You've got the Milwaukee Aquatic Park, which has been popular for a long time. They put that in when I was a kid, maybe 30, 30 some years ago. We're talking about swimming pools, wave pool, water slides, all the kind of things like that. There also happen to be a handful of iconic restaurants throughout the Milwaukee area. Roke's being one of them, kind of known for their hot dogs, started back in the 30s and still going strong. Mike's Drive-In, which is kind of like burgers, fries, also kind of known for their milkshakes, actually started in Southeast Portland, but one of their first locations, which is still there, is in Milwaukee. You got, and you've also got Buster's Barbecue, originally from Texas, which came here in the early 80s. That's actually uh, just right down the street from Roke's. It's not too uh, common, maybe especially on the West Coast, uh, to find a, a handful of restaurants in kind of one small area that have been around for decades, especially since like the early uh, 1900s, you know, 1930s when Rokes was founded. And depending on the time of the year, you've got a handful of uh, festivals, do you have live music, art exhibits, theater performances, uh, the Milwaukee Farmer's Market is right downtown in Milwaukee, which is a great farmer's market. You've got a handful of uh, galleries, museums, some historical places to explore, a fair amount of outdoor recreation, including fishing and boating. You have Milwaukee Bay Park, which is on the Willamette River. When I was growing up, that was mostly a big parking lot and a boat ramp, and a lot of people were going there just to to put in boats, uh, mostly uh, to go fishing. A lot of people would just go hang out sometimes, maybe just watch people putting in and taking out their boats. Whereas now they've totally revamped Bay Park. Parking isn't as good as it used to be, but there's a lot more park there. There's a lot more places to hang out. And that's a, a place also sometimes where you'll find concerts, which makes for a really great venue for a concert being right there on the Willamette River. It's beautiful. You do still have a boat ramp, so you have boat access. Of course, you can put in a, a smaller craft like a kayak as well. So you do have a fair amount of fairly inexpensive entertainment in Milwaukee. 
We've got an old school bowling alley in Milwaukee Bowl. It's been there for as long as I can remember. Lots of kind of just older, you know, league bowlers type of thing there. Not one of those like new cosmic bowling uh, where you find TVs and lots of other games and stuff like that. You do have a Dave & Buster's in the Clackamas Town Center right next door, which is arcade games, restaurant, tons of TVs, bars, places where you can go watch sporting events, UFC fights, stuff like that. And then of course you do have the Clackamas Town Center itself, which is one of the handful of malls that we have in the Portland metropolitan area. It's right there on the border with Milwaukee and Clackamas. So regardless of where you live in Milwaukee, it's not going to be too far from you. And then you do have the Clackamas Promenade, uh, sort of a strip mall shopping right across the street from the Clackamas Town Center. There's a Target in there, that's one of the big draws. And then there's just kind of a handful of other things that kind of revolve around the parks uh, and the river. Um, handful of events that uh, take place on the river, like the Christmas ships, were, which were just actually last night. Kind of varies from year to year, but there's like 30, 40, 50 ships that all dress up, put on Christmas lights, and have a handful of uh, paths that they take down the Willamette and the Columbia Rivers. Going from Portland to Milwaukee, so people that live in Milwaukee or on the other side of the river, Lake Oswego, can see there's usually three, four, five times throughout December where, the, where they'll drive up and then back down the Willamette. So watching the Christmas ships uh, this time of year in December is kind of a popular thing to do if you live in Milwaukee. So all in all, you can get by with some pretty cheap entertainment. Like I said, you can uh, find yourself going to Portland and spending some more money as well. The nightlife in Milwaukee isn't the most robust. I mean, there's not a ton of nightlife in Milwaukee. Again, if you're really looking for nightlife, a lot of people that are looking to live in Milwaukee are kind of like I initially described, people that kind of want to be close to Portland, but maybe not have to pay those Portland prices. So if you're one of those people, maybe you're living in Milwaukee to save a few bucks and then you're just going to Portland 10, 12 minutes to the north whenever you want to maybe find a little bit more nightlife. Now the shopping in Milwaukee is also very good. Just like the entertainment, you can probably get by on a budget or you can spend a lot of money. You have budget grocery stores like Winco, all the way up to more specialty grocery stores like a Trader Joe's. Now Trader Joe's is right there on the border of Milwaukee, Clackamas, Happy Valley. Uh, but again, kind of like Clack Clackamas Town Center, it's not gonna be too far from anywhere else that you live in Milwaukee. Aside from that, you have a Fred Meyer, a Walmart, a Costco. Again, the Clackamas Town Center. You have a Lowe's, you have a Home Depot. You really have about as good uh, of shopping and as, as many of choice, as many shopping choices in Milwaukee as really anywhere in the Portland metropolitan area. So you can really run up that bill going to Costco. You can really save going to places like Winco. All right, how about commute? The commute in Milwaukee is probably going to be good for you regardless of where you work or where you want to go because it is so centrally located. Not only that, but the roads that you're traveling to and from in Milwaukee, uh, like Highway 99, is primarily what most people in Milwaukee are going to be taking to get downtown. There's a lot of lights on Highway 99, but it's usually not too terribly congested, congested at least compared to a lot of the other highways in the Portland metropolitan area, whether it's I-84, 405, 217. That stretch of Highway 99 in Milwaukee, in my experience, does tend to actually be some of the better driving around the Portland metropolitan area. A lot of people work on the west side, like out towards Beaverton, Hillsboro. There's a lot of commercial space out there, a lot of offices out there. So there are a lot of people either working on the west side or downtown Portland. Again, Portland, 10 minutes away. West side, Beaverton, maybe 30 minutes away at the most. And if you have to go east or northeast, you're not gonna be too far away from anything either. So kind of regardless of where you're going for work, where you're going for shopping, where you're going for things to do, Milwaukee has probably one of the best locations in the Portland metropolitan area. So most people that are living in Milwaukee do tend to find that they spend less money um, commuting around and less, thus less money on gas. All right, let's talk about average age of homes. What are you gonna find in Milwaukee? Like a lot of places in the suburbs in the Portland metropolitan area, you can find some old historic homes all the way up to brand new construction. What are you mostly gonna find? Mostly mid-century, a lot of one level ranch style homes. Milwaukee was founded in the early 1900s. You will find a handful of like old Victorians. If you like Victorians, there's some really great ones in Milwaukee built in the early 1900s. There's a handful of new subdivisions being built in Milwaukee right now, but a lot of stuff is gonna be built between the 50s and the 90s. So how does that translate as far as cost goes? Once homes start becoming 20, 30 years old or so, that's when you start looking at major repairs, things as things such as roofs, furnaces, decks and fences. You could be looking at uh, replacing a lot of plumbing if the house is old enough. And then of course, updates. 
you know, maybe you need to remove that popcorn ceiling, update the kitchen, update the bathroom. You'll find that a lot of homes throughout Milwaukee though have been pretty well maintained and a lot of them are updated. So if you find something that's like in the 60s or 70s, one of those kind of like classic uh, three bedroom, two bathroom ranches that are really popular with both retirees and millennials, decent chance that it's gonna have new floors, new kitchen, maybe new bathrooms, stuff like that. So there's a decent chance that you might find a home that might not need too much, but in general, you're probably going to find a lot of the homes in Milwaukee are going to need some sort of maintenance, some sort of update. The lots here too are a little bit maybe larger than if you go north to southeast Portland or if you go like east to like Happy Valley. Those lots in Happy Valley don't tend to be pretty don't don't tend to be very big. They're also sloped to a lot of new construction out there. So, you know, with a, with a new construction, they take the trees down. You don't have as many of those old growth trees in like a happy valley as you do in Milwaukee. So if you live in Milwaukee, you're probably going to have a lot of big trees, trees that are dropping down, you know, foliage on your roof that are wearing on your roof, filling your gutters up, things like that. So your exterior, your landscaping, the lot size, all that's gonna play into your maintenance. And with Milwaukee, it's probably going to be maybe a little bit higher than some of the other areas that you might be looking at. Just depends on if you're looking at like a Happy Valley, which tends to be a lot of new homes, or if you're looking north uh, compared to like a Southeast Portland, homes there are gonna be just as old, if not older on average. Now, how about property taxes? All right, this is a tricky one. And if you're not familiar with Oregon property taxes, you can watch our video on property taxes, but people on average in Milwaukee are paying about 1%. Okay, but 1% of what? There's two assessments with your home in Oregon. There's the market assessed value and there's the real market value. Real market value is gonna be closer to like an estimate that you might see like on a Zillow, for example. Market assessed value is gonna be done by the county assessor. And here's where the taxes get kind of tricky. There was a law passed in 1997, measure 50, which prohibited taxes from going up more than 3% on a property every year. So if you find a property in Milwaukee that was built before 97, that's been capped at 3% growth in tax revenue every year, you're gonna find that property probably has uh, some lower property taxes as opposed to something that was maybe new or maybe you have a new home that there was an addition done to the home and they had and the county reassessed that home. And if you want to find out exactly what property taxes are, the best thing to do is just to get with us and Paul and I can figure out what you'd expect to pay for property taxes. But just eyeballing something, let's say we took $500,000 home in Milwaukee. Let's say it was built before 97. So it's been capped here for the last few decades or so. The assessed value by the county assessor is probably going to be somewhere about 80% of that real market value, maybe 75%. So let's say a $500,000 home is maybe um, assessed at like $400,000. That's what you're actually paying taxes on. So then you would take 1% of that. So maybe a, uh, a $500,000 home, you might pay about $4,000 in taxes that law measure 50 and that is that doesn't apply to bonds so there can be bonds that are levied for uh, other projects and um, that might be 10 or 20 percent of your of, of what you're paying in property taxes so maybe if uh, your property taxes are four thousand uh, dollars maybe you're paying like 4500 maybe closer to five thousand dollars including bonds now again that can totally vary depending on when the house was built or if there's been any additions to the house you could find one home that's the same size the same lot size and it could be right next to another home that's almost identical and same in size lot size home size but the home's newer and hasn't been subject to that three percent rule for the past few decades and so you're paying a little bit closer towards the, the real market value instead of that assessed value that's kept at that 3%. So property taxes can really vary widely from house to house, but just kind of in general, that's your look, that's what you're looking at. About 1% of the assessed, and if the home is older, the assessed is going to be some number less than the real market value. Again, best thing to do if you really want to figure it out, just get with us and we can tell you exactly what property taxes should be for the following year. Next, we have childcare, which is probably around some of the averages for some of the surrounding areas. Infants, on average, you're looking at about 1200 bucks a month. Toddlers, a thousand bucks a month. And then preschool to primary school, age kids somewhere under a thousand bucks a month maybe nine hundred dollars a month or so on average and that falls in line with uh, a lot of uh, the other child care costs that you'll find kind of in some of the surrounding areas definitely seen higher definitely seen some infants getting closer into those high teens 16 1700 in some places 
Milwaukee does have quite a few different child care options and there's a lot of options uh, surrounding Milwaukee as well too if you just want to go into like a neighboring area like a Happy Valley for example but those are about the prices that you would expect to pay now, as far as median household income for Milwaukee it's really kind of on par uh, with Oregon and with the country it's seventy thousand dollars in Milwaukee, 85 is the average, and statewide median income household is about 65,000. Nationwide, it's somewhere close to 70,000 as well. So household incomes for Milwaukee are gonna be on par right around with the state and as, as well as the rest of the country. And those numbers are from 2016 to 2020 for Milwaukee. So numbers might be a little bit higher here in 2022 going into 2023. You might say that uh, people in Milwaukee maybe make on average a little bit more than the statewide average or the national average, but it doesn't really impact prices locally. Not necessarily like considered like more of an affluent area like a Lake Oswego, for example. So probably not gonna find any Thing that kind of uh, goes along with some of those areas that have higher incomes. And one thing, one trick, and if you've seen my other Milwaukee videos, I probably mentioned this. One thing to know about Milwaukee, especially if you're searching for a home, there's basically two zip codes here, 97222 and 97267. Now 97267, if you look at it on Google, uh, it's going to be listed as Portland, but everything in that, in that area um, is Milwaukee. And if you actually see the 97222 zip code is actually closer to Portland and closer to Multnomah County than the 97267 zip code. If you combine those two, there's about uh, just over 50,000, maybe close to 60,000 people in those areas. And so if you're searching for homes and if you ever search for a zip code, or if you're searching just by name and maybe a zip code's being excluded, you wanna make sure and include those two areas. Now again, Paul and I are going to be the best resource for you if you're thinking about buying a home. And if you're somebody that's thinking about taking the next steps, you can definitely call us, text us, or email us, or as we always mention, you can click the link below in the description if you wanna schedule a Zoom call with us. Give us a thumbs up if this video helped you. Feel free to leave a comment, we'll respond. And if you wanna see more videos like this about what it's like to live in Oregon, make sure and subscribe to us and tap the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we drop a new video. Until next time, take care everyone.